The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And, uh, oh boy, we got a lot of football to talk about. Uh, the Lions did not live up to expectations. We'll get into that. Um, but we have a big, big, big week in college football, finally, uh, where I can actually be excited about college football. Um, the only game that I watched last week was uh, Michigan State and Washington, and we'll uh, basically skip over that game today. Um, but, um, other than that, not really any big, like news and notes. We'll talk about some of the NFL injury plague that's been going on, um, as we get to the games when we do picks and things like that. Uh, but starting off with college football, basically the big game, I would say it was Colorado, Colorado state. And, uh, I think Colorado state put up a heck of a fight, uh, comparatively to Colorado. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm not like a hater. But I would like for the Colorado hype to die down a little bit. So I was kind of sounds like you're hating, Joey. It sounds like you're hating. Yeah. Um, But I kind of wanted Colorado State to win that game, and uh, they didn't. So the Pac-12 is the Pac-12 basically undefeated. Pac-12 is the best conference in college football this year, so far. It's wild. And they're going to be gone next year. Yep. You got to love it. (laughs) Yeah. You got to love it. The the old swan song. Um, like we said, Michigan and Michigan State, they they weren't really a part of a whole lot. Michigan got the job done against Bowling Green. Is there any, anything you wanted to talk about in particular? I'm not happy. Okay. I'm not happy. I think that's fair. They won 31-6. to six. When I reflected over these first three games, obviously Michigan, Michigan was going to win. Even though they were going to be easy games, I feel like you wanted you wanted to see something specifically of a championship level team, and you wanted to see them accomplish certain goals. And I don't think they really did anything mm-hmm. in those first three games. Yeah, outside of JJ McCarthy playing great in those first two games, and Roman Wilson looking really good, I just I don't. I I don't like how Jim Harbaugh rotated the coaches. There was no consistency with how they played, really. That last game was J.J. McCarthy's worst game at Michigan Mm -hmm. that he played against Bowling Green. Three picks. On 13 passes. And each one wasn't very good. They're playing at one of the slowest paces in the country right now with a faster clock, and that's not good. I'm I'm hoping that Jim Harbaugh being back gets them onto the level they should be at, and maybe they can they have the ability to click on as a championship level team because they bring back so much from last year. But I'm I'm not impressed at all with yeah. the, what they've done in these first three games. Mm-hmm. You but you can't like you can't score over forty. Yeah, you play a slow pace. You're not stuffing the stat sheet like you want. Like, if I'm Michigan, I want to get Blake Corum right back in that Heisman Trophy talk. And I don't like a team saving themselves for later in the season. That's what it seems like. Right. It honestly seems like they were taking it easy. And just, and I, I understand they were dealing with injuries. Several starters missed the first three games. But I, that's, that's not, that's not how championship teams do. That's not what they do. Right. You want to hit the ground running right away. Yeah, you, you dominate competition that's not on your level. Mm-hmm. And they they clearly were the better teams each time. Yeah. But it I, – I just don't I, – I didn't like it. Right. And now they, they have another home game. They're going to play against Rutgers this week. 
Rutgers is 3-0. I mean, obviously, Rutgers is Rutgers. They're not really a threat, but... Don't be surprised if this game ends 28-14. to Okay. That's what I'll say. Maybe even 28-17. to Two years ago, Rutgers played them extremely tough and almost could have won. Yeah. Last year, Rutgers outplayed Michigan in the first half, and then Michigan turned on what they really were in the second half and blew Rutgers out. Mm-hmm. I, I need to see... Michigan actually play like a championship level team because Rutgers is three and zero, and yes, they're Rutgers. Mm-hmm. They're their, not, their defense is awful. Their defense isn't awful. They they usually well, they're. I think their defense is gonna be awful. Well, because like, because they don't have a high level of talent at most positions, mm-hmm. they're not gonna be like the highest ranked defense. But they lead by defense. Yeah, that's that's how they play, like playing a tough brand of football, and that's how they've won these first three games. They run the ball on you a lot. Yeah. Greg Schiano is going to have a game plan for Michigan like he has the first, I mean, the past two years. Mm-hmm. And I need Michigan to be ready because I don't want them to get embarrassed. Yeah. In their first Big Ten game. Right. And then MSU also has a home game. They're playing Maryland. Back to back fun ones. Michael Penix threw for 370. And. Five touchdowns in uh, the first half? I think he had four touchdowns. <coughs> four. But either way, um, I'm double check. Yeah, he because he only had four for the game. 473 on the game, four touchdowns. Do you remember a few weeks ago when I asked you where you thought this program might be headed? Mm-hmm. And I, I just had no idea where they could be going. Yeah. It, it's almost like... <laughs> They could be off the track. It's it's like a Thanos snap. Yeah. It, it this quick, everything has just like. Yeah. Ah. Now, what like, are you? Like I said, I believe whatever last week or the week before. Hopefully, they can get some big reset off of all this stuff that's going on, and maybe look towards the future. But if they can make a ball game at this point. Yeah. It, it, that would be a major win. Right. I think Maryland is going to be a really good test. We knew that Washington, they would just, they would lose. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Neither did I. Uh, so if they can rein it in a little bit against Maryland, I'll start to feel a little bit better because Maryland was another one that we thought was kind of where we could decide how good they were. These This Maryland and Iowa back-to-back games. Um, I was starting to look better and better now. It's, it doesn't help that it was announced that it's going to be a night game in Iowa. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. No. Um, so these two games for Michigan State are going to be really crucial to see where they're at. Washington, again, it's hard to take much of anything from that game. They just, they just didn't look ready. Um, so against Maryland, Maryland's going to be – Obviously, super they tough. They play a very similar style to Washington. Yeah. They like to air it out. Now, Talia Tungavaloa, he he has a knack to make more mistakes right. than a guy like Michael Penix. Yeah. But he can hit those big plays mm-hmm. if they're open. And they, they do scheme receivers open at Maryland. Right. So, so yeah, it's another tough test. Yeah. We'll see. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. I need to go back to the evaluation tank at this point. So, um, at the top of the standings, not much movement, of course. Like we said last week, there wasn't too many, you know, big games. Uh, Texas did move up, I guess, over Florida State. They beat Iowa, so or Wyoming, Iowa, um, and then Oregon moved up again. And now, we mentioned it last week, Oregon gets to play Colorado. The Pac-12 is about to feast on each other this weekend, um, which is going to be really interesting. Uh, but I would, I think the big game is still going to be Colorado. Everybody's watching Colorado right now. So Colorado, Oregon, where do you think this goes? They're missing Travis Hunter for the next two to three weeks. Mm-hmm. So a tall task just got even taller. I don't know if they can hang with Oregon. 
Oregon is I don't know 21 if point favorites right now. That's a lot. They could win by that much, but Shador Sanders is playing at such a high level. Yeah. That I I, I could see I could still see Colorado scoring well over 20 something points, but how do they keep Oregon from not scoring 40-something? Yeah, there's no way that that line does not move closer because Colorado was like the most bet sports team last week as sports in general. Um, so I can't imagine that line staying that big because uh, I'm sure more people are going to pick Colorado again in this matchup. So that will be a big game. Yeah, I would I would take Oregon because... <clears throat> Travis Hunter is arguably the most important piece of that team. Yeah. Like Shador Sun, even though Shador Sanders has emerged as a high level quarterback and future NFL talent. Yeah. Travis Hunter is a freak that you just can't replace. Mm-hmm. So yeah, their their defense has a lot to figure out. Right. Yeah, it, it should be interesting. I'm I'm kind of excited to see some of these. Uh, Pac-12 games that are going to yeah. be going on. Also, looking in the top 10, I think Washington should be at 5. think so? For beating MSU? I think they beat Boise State, who's going to be one of the better teams in the Mountain West. Yeah. I don't... I can't... They didn't play a really good team next, but even though Michigan State was without Mel Tucker... They and, got uh, Tulsa, Boise State, and Washington. Yeah. Or Michigan State. And Michigan State got absolutely pulverized and was in a bad place. Yeah. It's still a Big Ten team on the road. Mm-hmm. And like you said, nobody expected them to completely blow out Michigan State like that. They have rolled over everybody they've played. And Michael Penning, Michael Penning in that offense looked like an NFL offense. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I, I think they should be higher. Yeah. I mean, I can see it, but I can I can see arguments on both sides. Maybe the one person, like the one team that I feel like they could jump is maybe Ohio State because I think Ohio State just has looked Sluggish. I think they look more impressive than Penn State too. You think so? Yeah. I I think that one we, you could be a toss up just because neither team has really played anybody just yet. But I, I could see an argument on both sides. I think. Um, again, Alabama sitting at thirteen. They're two and one, of course, because they lost that game to Texas. They could arguably they, be lower. They struggled against South Florida, which we kind of laughed about that matchup last week. But they're. They went back and forth on their quarterback situation. Um, Milro is getting the start again. Yeah, right? he's he gives them the best chance to win at this point. Uh, you you just have to roll with him being a decent passer and a high level runner. You just have to deal with it at this point because the other two options just aren't good enough. Mm-hmm. Would like their offensive line just isn't very good. Like that's the shocking part. You assume they could just bully South Florida. And they couldn't bully them. Yeah. That that is different. I haven't seen an Alabama team look like that in an, I don't know how long. Right. Um, so some of the other uh Pac twelve matchups you were talking about. UCLA is gonna play Utah. That should be a pretty exciting one. Uh UCLA coming out of the gates hot again. Um big one for SEC, Old Miss and Alabama are playing. So that's like that's the season for Alabama, to be honest. It could be, yeah. If they lose that game, uh, basically their season's over because they're basically a championship. Ole Miss has Alabama and LSU back to back. Yeah, this is a huge stretch for them. Mm-hmm. Um, Oregon State, Washington State, that should be a fun one. I think Washington State starting out three and zero. It's fun to see, especially as a explosive offense as they have yeah, the last two teams left in the pack yeah ranked and playing really good football somebody picked them up <laughs> um ohio state notre dame also an interesting one that's a good that's, test for that's, ohio a state. lot of people see that as maybe the game of the weekend yeah that's that's ohio state's big test to kind of figure out where they're at on the season yeah. how, how they're gonna do i i don't think i'm not sure if many people have been paying attention to the way Notre Dame has been dominating. Mm-hmm. Like Sam Hartman, them having the having a stable veteran high level quarterback, it seems like it's changed everything for them. Yeah. And we'll have to see as the season goes on, but Sam Hartman has just been, he's been accurate. He makes all the throws. Their weapons, their young weapons are actually having a chance to make plays. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Aldrich Estime is the leading rusher in the country. I don't think anybody's paying attention to that. He would probably be in Heisman contention like 15 years ago. Yeah. But the game has changed so much. Yeah, they're they're just playing really high level football. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, and then kind of the rounded out of the good games for the weekend. Iowa taking on Penn State. That's another big Big Ten matchup. Uh, to see if Penn State is for real or not. I guess. Um, that's a night game as well at Penn State, so that should be pretty fun. I don't know if they're gonna do like their their whiteout or what they're going to do. But um, other than that, uh, there's not any matchups that I'm interested in. Is there anything else that you wanted to point out? I think one that you missed was a noon matchup, Florida State-Clemson. And yeah. A few weeks ago, it wasn't as interesting because Florida State was coming off the high of beating LSU, mm-hmm. and Clemson had gotten blown out by Duke and didn't look very impressive against Charleston Southern. But Clemson has kind of gotten it together in the past week or so. They thoroughly beat FAU. They look pretty impressive. And Florida State barely beat Boston College. Yeah. <laughs> like, Boston College probably should have beaten them. And if not for a fumble on their last drive in the last few minutes of the fourth quarter, Florida State wasn't stopping them. Right. Like, Boston College was just hitting big play after big play with a really good mobile new starting quarterback in Xavier Castellanos. This game could be more interesting than people thought. Yeah. Because it both teams are kind of going to the level that people kind of assumed. Right. And I'd still favor Florida State, but it's in Clemson. Yeah. And yeah, you never know what could happen. And uh well, wasn't Florida State without Keon Coleman? Uh no, he played. Did he? Yeah. So he just didn't hit the stat sheet at I all. I think he might have got banged up later in the game, but yeah, he he just he didn't do a lot. He did nothing. Yeah, they Jordan Travis tried to hit him on some like fades in the end zone, and both of them were oh, he bro- he had broken up. So he got a few targets. He did fumble. <laughs> That's like the only thing that I'm seeing. Hmm. Yeah, Jaheim Bell and Johnny Wilson had a bigger game. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that will be yeah. a little more interesting as as these two teams have kind of. Figured themselves out, maybe. Um, I don't have too many like reality checks this week, just because this is the week, yeah. This, this is, is the week where you get most of the checks. Yeah, we're gonna find out. So one of the ones that I, the thing that I was kind of thinking of is like where each conference is at. Like the one that stuck out to me today immediately was we have three ACC teams in the top twenty-five. Do you think that's real or is that fake? Because they haven't played a whole lot. We talked about Miami, of course, last week. But, uh, like, Duke, uh, North Carolina? Duke, I, I I think Duke and North Carolina are both good football teams. What Mike Elko at Duke is doing at Duke, I've said before, is real. Riley Leonard is a really high-level quarterback. <coughs> Even though he only has one pass and touchdown to zero interceptions. But that's because they haven't aired it out like that. They've just played mostly. They run the ball with Riley Leonard and those running backs. Right. Um, North Carolina, they've played a pretty like balanced football on both sides, but I still have some questions for them. Drake May has struggled. They right. haven't. Yeah, they have a new offense, and he's trying to figure out how to play his game in like more of a spread offense instead of an air raid. So yeah, yeah, he's he's had a transition. He's still making plays though. Mm-hmm. And Miami, I said they, they were interesting. I still think they are. Uh, that one against Texas A&M, I think, was impressive. We'll see what Texas A&M turns out to be as the season goes on. I think they're most likely like an eight or nine win team, Texas A&M. So, they'll still end up being a good win. Yeah. Uh, Let me look at Miami's upcoming schedule. They go to Temple this week. That's funny. I'll check in on that a little bit. Georgia Tech at North Carolina, Clemson. That's not an easy stretch. So yeah. yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see pretty quickly. Right. They got Georgia Tech at home. They go to North Carolina and then they play Clemson. Yeah. In a three week stretch. So if they can come out of that like two and one. Yeah. And we'll yeah. find out too about Florida State, uh, like we just talked about yeah. playing Clemson and to see where those teams are at, um, as well. Um, SEC is kind of still up in the air as well. Besides, Georgia's just in cruise mode right now. But Georgia did not look impressive against South Carolina. Yeah. 
Yeah, their their offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo, he's their new offensive coordinator. <coughs> their uh, offensive coordinator from last year left to go to the Ravens, Todd Monken. And Georgia fans aren't happy with what they're seeing from the offense right now. Mm-hmm. Part of it is injuries. Like, three of their top four running backs got hurt. So they're running, like, second and third string guys. Some of the receivers aren't that explosive. But they're still Georgia. Like, they were down 14-3 to three at half to South Carolina. Right. And once the second half started, they just turned it on. Yeah. And they took over the game. Mm-hmm. But they <coughs> they don't look like the same juggernaut that they did the past two years. So they, they have some flaws. Right. Yeah, bigger flaws. And then, like we said... <coughs> Already, like, we see LSU, who was kind of a preseason favorite, um, or a lot of people thought they might be able to make the jump. Alabama always up there. Both of those teams are already on the cusp of their season being basically over. Um, So the SEC is kind of in a a weird spot this year, surprisingly. And uh, we talked about it last week, but the Pac-12 just, (laughs) they're nasty right now. And uh, like I keep saying, they're going to – basically beat themselves up this weekend but we'll see kind of who's on top there and then the last one i wanted to talk about we got to talk about the big 10 do you think they're now that we've gone through it we've seen ohio state stumble you have your concerns about michigan potentially do you think the big 10 can get a team into the playoffs absolutely i think it'll only be one yeah you no longer think that there's a chance that there could be the two like last year and stuff I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, from what I've seen from all three teams, <clears throat> each of them have standout things that could get them to uh to the playoff, and each of them have flaws that could shut them down. Yeah. Ohio State looked like themselves for the first time this past weekend against Western Kentucky. Like they they made it look easy on both sides of the ball for most of the game. Sixty three to ten. Penn State has a lot of uh promise and upside. But we, I don't think we've even gotten close to seeing what they could really be. Like, they've just been good so far. But I need to see more from Drew Aller in that offense, honestly. If Illinois didn't turn the ball over every other uh, drive, they could have had a chance in that game because they were in it for a good amount. Yeah. And then, like I said for Michigan, um, I'm, I wasn't impressed with what they showed in those first three games. Right. They knew they were going to win easily. <clears throat> and... They kind of played and acted like it, which I I don't like that. I don't think that's a championship mentality, mm-hmm. and they need to fix that. They're talented enough to do it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we go to the NFL? Um, let me see. <clears throat> Shouts out to Florida for beating Tennessee. Back in the top 25. I don't even know if they're good, but yeah. they're ranked 25th. And Graham Mertz isn't embarrassing himself. Right. So congratulations. Cade McNamara isn't playing that great for Iowa, but they're playing Iowa football, so it works. Yeah. And shouts out to Dante Moore. Yeah. Getting UCLA in there. He is already balling. Yep. I said I thought he was the best freshman quarterback in this class, and he's proven it. And it also makes me sad because the best quarterbacks in Michigan don't stay in Michigan. And uh, top quarterback in 2025, Bryce Underwood, who goes to Belleville High School here in Michigan, mm-hmm. visited Colorado this past weekend, and he's probably going to go to Colorado. And that's three straight top 100 Michigan players out of quarterbacks that didn't go to Michigan. And my heart hurts. Let's move on to the NFL. Fair enough. The other thing, the one thing that I wanted to say, uh, when I made – when you said Florida, it made me think, is Trevor better than his brother, ETN? <sighs> Travis is more explosive. He put up some big numbers. But I like weekend. Trevor's style of running more than Travis's. Okay. Like Trevor, his big body, him being like six foot, like 215, almost 220. But he also has some elusiveness and has speed when he gets in the open field. <clears throat> I like the overall, like, completely whole balanced running back more than, like, electric scat back. Yeah. So, I like Trevor more, but Travis is a pro. 
Yeah. And he's like all, already close to being a Pro Bowl running back. So right. Trevor has a lot to prove. All right, moving on to the NFL. We got a weird slate of games this week. Um, yeah. There's some good ones, and then there's some some stinkers, in my opinion. Um, I mean, we you never know at this point. The Cardinals yeah. have been in close games in the first two weeks. Yeah, so but, I don't even know. Uh, but Dallas has been on another level. They have, unfortunately. Um, they've yeah, they've been. Really but good. at the same time, we're finding out Dallas has played a lot of stinker teams. So we'll find out eventually. Um, one more time, uh, my wife wanted to mention that she beat you in fantasy football this week. I told her that I would say it on the podcast. There it is. Listen, Malik's last place team is in last place. <laughs> Who's surprised? That's kind of how fantasy football works. <laughs> Who sometimes. is surprised? Um, so getting right away with picks. Last week was good to me. I got uh, I don't know, remember the exact count. I got eleven correct. Malik, you got eight. Okay. And not too bad. Mine was late in the day. I got Washington over Denver, and then I got the two Monday night games correct with New Orleans and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh pulling out kind of a last-minute I'm not going to lie. I'm upset at myself for not picking Washington because I, I've been on the Sam Howell train, and I, I should have stuck with it. Yeah, you got to get off that he's Russell Wilson good. saddle. Listen, that's Let, over. <laughs> let's not ride. That's been over. I, I'm not a, on the rush train anymore. <laughs> it's done. I mean, he almost got bailed out in the game by that, that Hail Mary, Hail Mary oh at the God. end. Yeah. So that's pretty wild. Uh, so I right now am up 20 to 17 on the season. But as we saw last year, I did the same thing, built an early lead, and you slowly clawed back. Yeah. So there's that's what, it's fine. Yeah. There's so much time left in the season. I like where I'm at. We're only at week three. So Thursday night, we got the Giants playing the 49ers. The Giants have not technically ruled out Saquon Barkley, even though he had a high ankle sprain in the last game supposedly he's healing quickly. I'm still assuming he's going to sit. And even if he played, it wouldn't matter. 49ers. Yes, I agree. It took an extremely high level effort from the Giants to come back from a 20 point deficit against the Cardinals. From the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. And Saquon Barkley might be out. Yeah. I don't think the Giants are, good. Th- are that bad, but they're definitely not as going to be as good as they were last year. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee at Cleveland. Oh, boy. Everybody hates talking about Cleveland right now because they lost Nick Chubb for the season with a brutal, brutal uh, knee injury. How? I, I don't understand how that – basically the same injury Yeah, twice. Like, I remember when it ha- – I was watching when it happened at Georgia, yeah. and that was brutal. Mm-hmm. This is this looks worse. Yeah. Like, it, it looks career-altering, which it may be, and that's yeah. unfortunate. Yep. There's a potential that it could end his career because of his age and everything. Super unfortunate. Now, he did come back from it yeah. when he was at Georgia. It'd be amazing if he came back like Adrian Peterson. Yeah, just went I mean, crazy, but. he already did it once, which is already defying the odds because yeah. even in college when he did that, you're not supposed to come back better, and he was better, and he became one of the best rushers in the NFL. So it's going to be even harder for him to come back now, but hopefully for the best. He can. Now, luckily, Cleveland does have Jerome Ford, who looked really good on Monday night. Um, they did also sign Kareem Hunt this morning uh, to a one-year, $4 million deal. Who knows what role Kareem Hunt's going to play. It might just be back to what he was uh, with Nick Chubb, but that's all a wait and see. Um, they're at home. Tennessee actually looks pretty good now. Um, last week, comparatively to week one, I think I'm going Tennessee just because they're they are known they are known for their run defense. That's what Cleveland wants to do. Deshaun Watson's looked bad. I'll be honest. He just he's not cutting it. And uh, Tennessee is just one of those teams that always finds ways to win. And I I, I think that's why I'm going to go with them. I have no idea what Deshaun Watson is anymore. Uh, it seems like he's getting further and further away from what he was in Houston. Yeah. I don't know. But I will tell you, I don't trust Ryan Tannehill on the road in a rowdy environment. Okay. At the dog pound? Is in, in the dog pound. 
they're going to have to give Derrick Henry like 30 carries for them to like win this one outright. I just, I, I don't believe in the Titans anymore. Maybe as a franchise. I, it's like, I don't believe in this team, mm-hmm. but the Titans overall, I just don't vibe with them anymore. <clears throat> I'm going to go Cleveland. Okay. I feel like this is what happens with the Titans every year. Everybody just kind of denies the Titans, and they somehow are there in the end. Yeah. I, I'm not a big Titans fan either, but, like, like it's just it's one of those things. Too much Nick Westbrook Akine for me. Yeah. It's, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins is a little banged up, supposedly, so you never know. I think that's a good toss-up game. Okay. Here we go. Atlanta at Detroit. Let's have a little conversation, Joey. Ugh. Like, give, give give me a few, just a few little points from your thoughts from that last game. The Detroit Lions have a Seahawks problem. Uh, they have accumulated a plethora of injuries in one week that are all disheartening, basically. Um, the only positive that I have going into this game is that their run defense has still been very good at stopping people. Uh, Now, it couldn't stop Kenneth Walker from getting across the goal line, but between the 20s, it was very successful. Now, B. John Robinson is going to be something that they haven't seen, so I'm a little nervous of that. And I'm also a little bit nervous that they're not going to get a dang sack on Desmond Ritter. It It is two weeks weeks in a row where they look like they get pressure almost every play and they cannot get home. It blew my mind. Every single time, I was like, they can't get to Geno. Yeah. They just can't get to him. And he wasn't running around like Mahomes as much. He has good pocket presence, so he right. knows how to move away from a sack, but yeah, it was it was strange. Yeah, and it, it sucks to say, but it feels like Aiden is one of those players that like... He needs help. It looks like he sh- he needs he needs other guys on that line to help him. He's starting to look like he's putting in more effort than he's actually producing. I guess he's and, playing hard. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't doubt that. But um, yeah, it's not that he's not trying. It's just yeah. I think it's just his running style and stuff that makes it look even more like he's working hard, and it's just not enough. And I think that's where we're maybe seeing the ceiling for Aiden of like he's really good at what he does but he's he's just not that elite guy per se he's not like a Nick Bosa or somebody like that yeah and maybe he still has a chance to get there but there's there's something about elite pass rushers where almost every elite pass rusher has like an edge move where like that swim move where they go low yeah like with their shoulder Mm -hmm. have you seen Aiden Hutchinson do that once no like hit hit the edge super quick and just dip under somebody and get an easy sack. He's a spin move kind of guy. He's a sp- he's spin move and bull rush. It seems yeah. like are like his main moves. Right. And he's not able to beat the double teams, which the elite guys can do. Which and, which is fine. That right. he's a second year guy. Yeah, it's fine that he can't dominate. Yet. Right. He dominate but yet. I'm just saying maybe we're starting to see. That maybe he's not that kind of guy. He's. Super good. He's yeah. he's. I'm not denying that he's good, but maybe he's just not that elite guy. I guess if that makes sense. It, but he does. He still he, has time, and he does need help. I agree yeah. with that. The he, the defensive line. The, the, this is no defensive tackles. How? <laughs> what defensive tackles? <laughs> yes. And then the other <laughs> one too that I didn't even know the way that this happened because I I was in and out of the game uh, at certain points. Um, but I, I watched, like, all the main drives and all that and paid close attention. But I did not know James Houston was on special teams when he got hurt. I didn't know that either. Why is he on a special team? Well, I understand why, because he's not he's not a star player. But he's one of the few guys on this he, team. He's a guy that was supposed to be a reliable pass rusher. Exactly. Yes. But he's also... But to see a guy like that, when we need pressure, he gets hurt on special teams. Just feels, feels that awful. does suck. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, so he'll be out six to eight weeks or so. C.J. Gardner Johnson. 
We're retiring the masks. That's for sure. The ski masks, no more. Um, but he did tear his pec, and there's potential he could be out for the season. Now, there was some news that came out today that said maybe he'll come back towards the end. Uh, that's if they're in meaningful games that he could play. So that's maybe maybe some good news. Um, Vitae got banged up in the game. David Montgomery got banged up in the game. Uh, Taylor Decker was out last game. I can't remember what the update said, but sounds like he's still uh, ailing. Luckily, our offensive line has plenty of backups. And the last thing that I want to talk about. You haven't even gotten to David Montgomery yet. Well, I mentioned it briefly. Okay. And that's kind of where I was leading into. The David Montgomery happened. The injury happened. His thigh is got a problem. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's going to play this week, but there's a chance. Um, Jameer Gibbs. I think a lot of people saw the flaws to Jameer Gibbs. That's not even what I was going to bring up. What were you going to bring up then? You picked him 12th. Well, that was going to go... Outside, outside of that drop, what really are the major flaws? Uh... I don't know if he's... I mean, you don't run him in between the tackles, obviously. I know, but that's the problem, and that's the point. Uh, a good point that I think a lot of people have brought up. You got to give him the... I think we don't have enough enough of a sample size. Yeah. But that's in, the problem to me. But it already looks like they don't trust him in that role because they were playing Craig Reynolds quite a bit down the, down the stretch. It looked like he was struggling with blocking, which is the thing that David Montgomery usually does, which, again, makes sense. But to be the 12th pick... And to be more of a gadget style running back is a. I figured that's how it would be to start. Yeah, and it's only been two games. Right. I figured he would be more of a gadget guy to start. Yeah, but that but, has to change now. But it is slightly concerning. I would say, especially when we traded out to get that twelfth pick, and now we look at how bad our defensive line is. Looking at how good Jalen Carter has played for the Eagles, it just makes you concerned, I guess. I'm not, like, setting sail in that Jameer Gibbs is a bust or anything, but it just raises the level of concern for using that pick on him. Yeah, you you got to give him more carries, and you got to throw it to him more, like, to see him make plays. Yeah. There just hasn't been enough yet. But I don't know, I don't know when we're going to see that, because... A lot of indications are showing that Craig Reynolds is going to be the guy. They elevated Zonovan Knight up to the main roster. That's obviously for security, but I don't know. I, honestly, if you don't allow him to be explosive, like week one, Kansas City, he showed everything Lions fans wanted to see. Yeah. He hasn't just regressed in in the, in the week since. Yeah. And like, he, that's not what happened. He has that explosiveness to him. And he got though, like he got, he had seven catches in the game uh, against Seattle, but he didn't do as much with them. He didn't, I don't know. He he looked like he was dancing a little too much, and I know that's part of his game. But there's also a point where he's so fast, he needs to just go north and south. And the other scary thing is that that was sort of DeAndre Swift's problem. I'm not drawing comparisons necessarily, but that's just where my mind heads. And again, I'm not. I'm not writing off Gibbs at all. I think he's super talented. I just want to see them. He needs the ball more. Yes. Yeah. I want to see them utilize him better or more. Um, and if if they're going to go with a tandem still of like Craig Reynolds and Gibbs, honestly, I would much rather see Zonovan Knight in that role. I've seen Craig Reynolds. I like Craig, Craig Reynolds. He's a fan favorite. But Bam I saw some. Talented. I saw some things from Bam Knight last year He's that I talented. really liked, and I loved that signing in the offseason. I thought it was sneaky, uh, so I would rather do that one to punch with the young guys and see what we have. Um, but that's just me. That's just me. Um, again, defense needs to clean stuff up. Jerry Jacobs got torched last week. They picked on him every single t- every drive. Yeah. Now, luckily, Atlanta, they're running run first team, so they're pretty predictable. But if they get down, they do have weapons to throw to. If you get any pressure on Desmond Ritter, you win the game. Yeah. Any. Yeah. 
even if you give him time, he hasn't shown he can do great things. Yeah. As Get long as a little can, pressure on them. As long as you can stop their backs in the running game. Force them to throw. Keep them on third and long. That's all we ask. I have to go for Detroit. Bounce back game. Has to be. If it's not, I'm not coming in next week. <laughs> Just off a of hope, I'm going to go to Detroit. Okay. I hope they win. And again, we didn't expect this team to go undefeated. So a loss is not the end of the world. But coming off the win against Kansas City, Seattle, they basically gave the game away, in my opinion. Second half was rough. So, um, New Orleans at Green Bay. A couple of teams that are playing uh, pretty decently right now. I wouldn't say great, but pretty decently. Uh, Green Bay's looked pretty solid. New Orleans looks pretty solid with their car under them. Jamal Williams is going to be hurt for New Orleans. Green Bay, I don't know about Aaron Jones. Um, do you want to go first on this one? I kind of have. I trust New Orleans' defense in this. I like Green Bay's young uh, receiving talent, and Jordan Love has looked pretty solid so far. But yeah, I think New Orleans' defense wins this one for him. Okay, I'm kind of thinking along the same lines, but I'm going to go with Green Bay because I think this is a good toss-up game. Um, Green Bay's at home, so that's a tough place to play. Uh, Derek Carr, I think. Who'd they play in week one? Did they play Tennessee in week one? Yes. Oh, so I guess they did play. Well, he struggled in the game one. Looked a little bit better at home in dome in the dome. All right. I'm going with Green Bay. Uh Denver at Miami. Miami. <laughs> Thank you. Not even a thought. I, um this Watch next Denver one win that game. This next one also hurts my soul. The battle of the undef- uh the unwin. Defeated teams. The 0-2 Chargers and the 0-2 Vikings. How good are the Chargers going to be this year, Joey? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they, they like, look good. They're doing exactly what the Chargers do every year. They look good until they don't. Um, I will take into account that Austin Eckler was out last week. Josh Kelly didn't really do anything for them. I don't know. I don't have faith in either of these teams, but let me look at this, this is the injury report really quick. Austin, Austin Eckler, Austin Eckler he, he came on his podcast uh, today, and he didn't really say a whole lot. He said that he's feeling better, but he didn't really give a direction on his status. I like Josh Kelly more than Alexander Madison. Yeah, Alexander Madison has looked rough. I'm Although, take the Chargers. <laughs> I feel bad for Alexander Madison. Did you see his post about all the hate that he's been getting? Uh, yes. That, it, insane. Uncalled Ridiculous. For. But I'm going with the Chargers. Dang it. Okay, well, maybe that's a good juju because I'm going to go for the Vikings then. And maybe the Chargers will win. Shouts out to Captain Kirk for balling in a primetime game and still losing. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And he's probably going to still get the blame for it because that's just how it goes. Sneaky thing that I heard, really quick. If the Vikings keep losing, should the Jets call for Kirk? I thought that was a kind of that'd be kind of a fun move. I could root for Kirk Cousins in a Jets uniform. What do you trade? I, you know, I honestly, what do they have? I don't know. It'd have to be draft. They don't have, I was about to say, do they have? Do the Jets have picks? To I'm not sure. But people were talking about it. I don't think it would take a they ton. Get, I can't remember Kirk, everything they gave to Green Bay. I because, can't remember. Because Kirk Cousins is an aging quarterback. So they. It would just be like a one year thing because they still want Aaron Rodgers to come back. Yeah. Maybe they trade Zach Wilson. As sad as that would be. But then Minnesota then gets a chance to see Zach Wilson in their offense. And then no, if they can't get him no, right. No, no. <laughs> don't, don't even. Just erase everything you said in the past ten seconds. <laughs> no, that that just turned my stomach. Absolutely not. He can just go launch it up to Justin Jefferson. Seeing Zach Wilson in purple, throwing picks to Justin Jefferson because he can't complete. Oh my god! Then they can go yeah. get Caleb Williams or something. Charges over Vikings. Okay, just a thought. <laughs> um, New England at those Jets that we were just talking about. This is going to be a disgusting game. <laughs> yeah, it is. Two really good defenses, offenses that. Are weird. Shouts out to all the Jets players being so positive and like 
being real leaders like around Zach Wilson. Yeah. And like trying to maintain his confidence, even though it seems like it's obviously just gone. Yeah. <sighs> Mac Jones has been better. Mm-hmm. But I saw a crazy video earlier so- showing like Mac Jones has like never had a good win in his career. <laughs> And it, when you look at it, like, he's lost every, like, close game except for, like, one or two. Mm-hmm. It, it's bad. I'm going with this the Jets. Is, oh, my God. I'm going with the Jets. I think it's their time. Their is team. it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? It's the Jets' time? Okay. Yep. It's just the thought. New England's first win of the season. Okay. I can't trust Zach. I can't do it. That's fair. The, That's totally fair. The Jets fair. aren't scoring more than – if they score 21, that will be good. Yeah. Because the Patriots' defense looks legit. Mm-hmm. And Christian Gonzalez, yeah, he looks he like, looks like the pick. real deal. I mean, potentially a steal because they got him at like 12, something like that. Uh, Buffalo at Washington. We're not taking Washington, Listen, right? Man. We like We both like Sam Howell. Listen, but. man. <laughs> How crazy am I, Joey? Uh, you're not that am crazy. Am I a crazy person? Not that crazy. Bills. I'm starting Josh Allen again this week. I say, don't give me the free win on that one. As soon as I bench Josh Allen, he turns into himself again. Yeah, that's that's fantasy football for you. Yeah. Houston at Jacksonville. Houston is a tough matchup for quarterbacks for some dang reason. Jacksonville couldn't score against Kansas City. It was weird to me. Yeah. Like, they kept, like, making – Sustaining some good drives. Trevor Lawrence could not hit Calvin Ridley to save his life either. He had to go to Christian Kirk in that game. Christian Kirk had a big game. Yeah, I don't know. Jacksonville's a weird team, but Houston is just not very good. Not very good. They still have offensive line injuries. CJ Stroud had a pretty good game. Yeah, last week. he had to throw a lot, and he's probably yeah. going to have to throw a lot this season. Probably in this game, too. Yeah, I'm going Jacksonville. Okay. I'm actually going to go Houston. I just think Houston might be disruptive enough, but I could be totally wrong. Indianapolis at Baltimore. Anthony Anthony Richardson is out, right? He's still in concussion protocol, protocol. so we don't fully know his status. Now, they do have Gardner Minshew as a backup, which is a pretty good backup. Um, He's playing Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and I think Baltimore is going to get into their groove pretty soon here. Uh, They looked better last week. Yeah, I, I'm going Baltimore. I have to. Yeah. Zay Flowers is looking like he's worth the pick so far. Yeah. Looking really good. Carolina at Seattle. Bryce Young is off to a rough start, and yeah. I don't blame him. They can't use him in QB sneaks. Did you see that report? That They, like, can't trust him in QB sneaks because of his size. And we saw Andy Dalton come in a couple times on uh, Monday night in those situations. Um, It's interesting. Seattle had a huge bounce back, and now they get to go back home with a win against the Lions. Seattle. Yeah. I can't. I, I think Carolina's defense is good, but their offense is just not ready. I'll go with Seattle, too. Chicago, Kansas City. I'll write down Kansas City for you. Chicago <laughs> looks like a mess. An absolute mess. Who is Matt Eberflus? I don't know. I'll ask that again. Who is this dude? Who's the last few hires they've had? Why does he have any credentials? Who 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 is who is this dude? Wasn't he an OC before? I think a D, he's a DC. Oh, is he? He's yeah, a defense. defensive. I couldn't yeah. tell. I can't tell either way. <laughs> I know the name Luke Getzey now, the Bears offensive coordinator, because he's so bad. Yeah. What is this? You see, today I just saw actually before we started that uh, Justin Fields had attributed his robotic play to possibly coaching. Why are they trying to make him play like Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. He's right. It's crazy for him to say it, but I love it. Yeah. He's he's trying to play the way his coaches want him to play. Yeah. He's having the Lamar Jackson issue. Not that not Lamar Jackson in Baltimore, but Lamar, Lamar Jackson never had being, this much of an issue. Lamar being drafted, uh, let's say. Coaches didn't want to change their offense. They wanted him to be a pocket but passer. I, as soon as Raven, Baltimore, Baltimore drafted him and exactly, they adjusted to him. Exactly. Chicago, what are you doing? Listen, I I want to feel bad for Bears fans, but it's kind of funny seeing them this bad. But, man, 
Yeah. Just, they've never had a 4,000 yard passer, Joey. Yeah. Well, Justin, how do you, how Justin does, Jefferson just passed their all time leading receiver. Do you how see that? does this happen? I don't know. I know they've always Justin been Justin Jefferson like, passed the Bears. Yeah. Justin Jefferson would be the all time Bears wide receiver in yardage. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? In their entire tenure. Talk, you, the Bears are one of the oldest franchises. People say the Lions are a tortured franchise. Oh, my God. But I started thinking, like, who have the Bears had at wide receiver, like, that are – and that have stayed? Listen, them having uh, Brandon uh, – They had Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey together. Yeah. With Jay Cutler. That's, like, the best, like, three quarterback and two receivers. That might be the best in, in history. For that franchise. Yeah. And that is depressing. Yeah, it is. That, oh, man. Poor Bears, man. <laughs> Poor Bears. Well, we'll see. Uh, Dallas at Arizona. This isn't fun. This is not fun. <laughs> so Predict said, the score. Uh, Does Dallas hit 50? Well, they've averaged, what, 35? Because they had 40 and 30 or something. This better be at least like 42 to 14. Dallas better. I think Arizona's defense is better than people expect, but. Dallas better make this look easy. Yeah. I, I think it'll be at least like 35-7. I'll, I'll say 35-7. I'm going to write that. My down. boy Deuce Vaughn got carries last week. It made me proud. Oh he actually looked good. I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh at Vegas. Uh, These are a couple is, rough uh, teams. Yeah. Devontae Adams, I think, is going to be okay. He got banged up in the last game. Um, Pittsburgh's defense looks good. Josh Jacobs looks bad. Well, he doesn't look bad. Their offensive line looks bad. The Steelers were able to make some offensive plays. Yeah. George Pickens with Listen, big plays. Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt. Them That's a two. Duo. They look like a problem. Get them to the Lions. I'm going with the Steelers. Yeah, I'll go with Vegas. Yeah. I think this is a toss-up game. Again, Detroit, trade for Max Crosby. Just do it. It would be perfect. Yeah. Trade Jared Goff and okay, now we're... another offensive piece. What? To load up your defense. What else are you trading? No. <laughs> They're going to ask for whatever you, whatever you have that's extremely oh, valuable. We got you got to give it up. We, we got picks. It's Hendon Hooker time. He's not, he's not even healthy yet. Uh, Philadelphia at Tampa Bay. Baker. 2-0, and oh, Baker. He's playing, like, good football. Decently. Listen, yeah. I, I've, He's I've playing seen, tough. I can't remember who it is on Twitter, but it's, like, an analyst that, like, breaks down film. Mm -hmm. Like, Baker has shown, like, high-level chemistry with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Like, he's he's getting rid of the ball before they're getting in, like, making their breaks and routes. Yeah. And they're turning around, and the ball is there. This is his best wide receiver duo, I would say. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really impressive. Because what did he have? In Cleveland, Amari, Amari Cooper well, they, wasn't there yet. Do you have, he had Jarvis oh, Landry, and they brought in Odell, but then they made the head coach Freddie Kitchens. Right. And, and that, just, that was just a clown show. And him and Odell didn't have chemistry at all. Um, Philadelphia's <coughs> looked a little bit iffy. They're not the same. They haven't looked as good as we thought they would yet. Um, but I assume they're going to turn yeah. that around at some point. Their, their DBs got torched a little yeah. against Minnesota. Which is scary against Mike Evans. I just can't Give pick. Me can't pick Tampa Bay. The sucking ears. Okay. You can go for that. I did take Houston. I'm probably so gonna lose. That's, yeah, I'm probably gonna lose. I took Houston, so I guess that's okay. Um, and we got L.A. Rams against the Cincinnati Bengals. Two of the weirdest teams on the season. Kuka, Kua. Yeah. Fifteen catches in his second game. He Most has, ever by rookie. Most total catches and most total yards in the first two games by a rookie receiver in NFL history. Yeah. Fifth round pick, Puka Nakua. Looking like a seal. And the thing that I was pointed out at some point, Cooper Cup could be back, hopefully. And a lot of people are like, well, he's getting the Cooper Cup role. That's why he's playing so well. Cooper Cup mainly plays in the slot. Listen, Tutu Atwell is balling too. So. Puka is playing on the outside. So yeah. there's a different role. Like, him and Cooper Cup could be good together, actually, which 
Maybe maybe the Rams have something. Listen, if you are uh if you are a college football sicko like me, you might have seen this coming because Puka Nakua was a five star receiver coming out of high school. Yeah. So the talent was always there. They just didn't use him at BYU like he should have been used. Yeah. And a lot of people thought he was a sneaky pick in the draft that he could do something. Yeah. Uh I don't think they thought it'd be like this right away. It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot so far. Yeah. And then we have the Bengals on the other side at home. Joe Burrow might not Listen, play in this game. Uh, they've been. I might have to figure out a way to trade Jamar Chase because it's just not something is off. They've been bad. Something is wrong. They've they've been bad. Did it, they bring back Joe Burrow too fast? Probably. I, do you remember at the beginning of the season, Jamar Chase said that he should sit for like the first three or four weeks or they something. Should have let him simmer some more. They just pulled him out the oven too much too fast. Yeah. I don't know. It's wild. Cincinnati's 0-2. I, I expect they're going to figure it out at some point. Uh, I just can't. I can't imagine them being this bad for that long. But, yeah, this is a scary game for them because the Rams are way better than people thought. And Cincinnati's way worse than people Give thought. Give me Cincinnati. Okay. I will go. Just, just imagine them starting to. They started 0-2 last year. And then they made it to the playoffs and beat Buffalo. Right. Joe Burrow has it in him to yeah. just turn things around. Um, I'm going to go with the Rams, though. I, I think they're just going to keep on their hot streak. I'm also kind of banking that maybe Joe Burrow doesn't play in this game. And that's what I'll go with. So, If that happens, I, I may have the right to change the pick. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will. I will let you change the pick if that injury occurs. That is that is fair. Um, okay, that was uh, week three. I just keep going back to the Lions. This is hey, this is a big game now. This was like Atlanta was supposed to be a cakewalk, and now it's a big game. Atlanta looks better than people thought. Detroit kind of stumbled. Now a lot of people originally thought Detroit would be one and one going into this game, but not in this fashion, I guess. And Dan Campbell just has to figure out how he wants to to coach games, because he's super aggressive until he's not. Uh that that's the problem. If you're aggressive, be aggressive. Playing for the field goal in the, at the end of the fourth, that just confused me. Yeah, they played they it really went slow. For the win. Yeah, at least take a shot or two at the yeah, end zone. Didn't take a shot. Josh Reynolds seemed to be open every time they ran that little seam route with him. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Sam Laporta was fighting for every stinking yard. Throw him in. Put him at the at the red zone. He'll fight for it. I don't know. This receiving core is going to be spooky because Amon Ross St. Brown got banged up in the game, had a little turf toe, and as soon as he went out, the receiving core struggled. They did not look as good. You're going to see some more unplanned Antoine Green. Yeah. He looked and decent in his catch. Yeah. They're, they're going to be more Sam Laporta targets, mm -hmm. and let's hope. That they get more Jameer Gibbs targets. Come on, what yeah. are we doing? Yeah, they got they got to figure it out. Yeah, you're super creative, Ben Johnson. Let's get this done. Yeah, I think people took uh, David Montgomery to took advantage of having Montgomery, and they didn't really understand the appeal of him. I think after watching that game, after he went out, I think they understand why Detroit wanted or liked David Montgomery so much. So, big game this weekend. Lots of uh, big games in college football. NFL, like we said, there's some good ones, there's some bad ones, but we'll see. This has been Feeds from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time.